the effects between air temperature and the formation and persistence of contrails by Kyle Francis, Alex Lachey, Abby Monin. Purpose. Our purpose is to determine the effects, if any, of air temperature on the formation and persistence of contrails. Hypothesis. We believe that we will find that warmer air temperatures will result in the formation of spreading contrails, while colder air temperatures will result in the formation of non-spreading contrails. We also believe that the short-lived contrails will be formed in the coldest of temperatures. Procedure. To obtain our data, we accessed the GLOBE database and downloaded all information consisting of both air temperatures and contrails. To ensure the accuracy of the results, we deleted all data points containing more than 50 contrails in one day and points with only one contrail. Assuming that data points with 50 plus contrails were either falsified or near airports, we decided they would conflict with the authentic relationships between such phenomena. Additionally, we believe the data of only one contrail might be falsely reported or unjustly classified due to a lack of comparison. Using Microsoft Excel, we graphed the obtained data from the GLOBE database. Using the current temperature and number of contrails as the axes, we constructed the best graph to show our results as best as possible. We then decided to show relationships of each type of contrail and the temperature. We found the GLOBE online representations to show how each contrail is truly formed and why. Our results are as follows. Results. Our results indicated that both spreading and short-lived contrails were more abundant in temperatures between 16 to 19 degrees Celsius. However, neither the short-lived, spreading, or non-spreading contrails were more abundant in warmer or colder temperatures. Our results indicate that the temperature may affect contrail formation. However, temperature is not the only effect upon the formation and persistence of various contrails. The relationship between temperature, short-lived contrails, non-spreading contrails, and spreading contrails. As you can see, we have constructed a graph. The x-axis is the current temperature, y-axis number of contrails. As you can also see, the graph indicates a wide variety of different heights of the bar graphs. The green represents short-lived contrails, the red non-spreading contrails, and the blue spreading contrails. As you can see, the green and red represent most of the graph, while blue is barely seen. This graph greatly surprised us. It was not at all as we had anticipated. We had anticipated the warmest temperatures and the coolest temperatures to have the largest number of contrails. We actually found that the largest number of contrails could be found in the warmest temperatures, the middle temperatures, and the coldest temperatures. It did not matter which temperature was present, the contrails could be formed in any one temperature taken. This graph shows the relationship between temperature and spreading contrails. The x-axis is the current temperature, the y-axis the number of contrails. We have concluded from this graph that the degrees from 16 to 19 has shown us the most number of contrails that were recorded. This graph again surprised us, for we were looking for a gradual increase or decrease in the graph data. This graph was created to study the relationship between temperature and non-spreading contrails. Once again, the x-axis is the current temperature and the y-axis is the number of contrails. The red represents the non-spreading contrails. Although both the short-lived contrails and the spreading contrails showed increasing numbers in the 16 to 19 degrees Celsius range, the non-spreading contrails did not. The non-spreading contrails occur randomly in every temperature region. We could not find a pattern between the temperature and the persistence and formation of the non-spreading contrails. The relationship between temperature and short-lived contrails. Again, the x-axis is the current temperature, and the y-axis is the number of contrails. The same pattern is apparent in this graph as it was in the last. Also, 
most contrails were formed in the 16 to 21 degrees Celsius range. The short-lived contrails and the spreading contrails have a very similar graphic appearance to them. All of these graphs have a certain wave-like pattern, each with multiple troughs and crests. This could be a relationship that needs further investigating. With these graphs, we have seen how, or how not, temperature is related to contrail formations. They were a great guide to show us our results for this project. Contrail formation. Learning about these contrails led us to wonder how contrails actually do form. The next three slides will explain how the various types of contrails are actually formed. Although temperature does have an effect on contrail formation, moisture levels, as well as clouds, also have an effect. Short-lived contrail formation. The exhaust from the airplane mixes with the air from the atmosphere along the straight line between points B and A. A contrail forms at point F and persists to point D. When the straight line between points A and B barely crosses into the condensation curve, a short-lived contrail is formed. Persistent contrail formation. When point A is such that the straight line between points B and A crosses further into the condensation area and A is closer to the sublimation curve, a longer lasting or persistent contrail forms between points F and D. Spreading contrail formation. When point A is in the hatched area or the moisture area, the addition of warm Moist airplane exhaust leads to a persistent, possibly spreading, contrail since the ice particles created at point F will not sublimate at point A. These graphics are from the GLOBE website under contrail formations. Conclusion In concluding this project, we have found that the relationship between air temperature and contrails may be more complex than we had expected. As you have seen in the graphs, a definite wave-like pattern does exist and could be the real relationship between these two areas. We do know that temperature does have some effect on contrails for a number spike occurred between 16 and 21 degrees Celsius on these graphs. To what extent temperature is a factor of contrails is not yet apparent to us. Having these results, we have concluded that moisture in the air, humidity, would have a greater effect on the contrail type than air temperature, thus concluding our project on the relationship between air temperature and contrail formation. Thank you. The Effects Between Air Temperature and the Formation and Persistence of Contrails by Kyle Francis, Alex Lachey, Abby Monin.